Now, let us derive an expression for electric field produced by a thin spherical shell. Let this be a thin spherical shell with center O and radius capital R. Let R be the radius of the sphere. Spherical shell. Now, we are interested in finding the electric field produced by this shell on a point outside, outside the shell and a point on the shell and a point inside the shell. We need to find that in separate cases. Let a charge, a positive charge is distributed uniformly on this spherical, thin spherical shell. See, this is a spherical shell, okay, which means inside the shell it is air and out, both inside and outside the shell it is air. So, let us take a point P, let's say a point P outside the, this thin spherical shell. We need to find the electric field produced by this shell at this point. For that, we have to take a Gaussian surface. A convenient Gaussian surface is a spherical Gaussian surface through this point P. Let's take a spherical Gaussian surface. Let R be the R be the radius of the spherical Gaussian surface. First case one. Electric field. Electric field. At a point, at a point outside the sphere, outside the thin spheric, the thin spherical shell. Okay, we can call that as that condition as radius the, the point the distance from the center to the point r greater than the radius of the spherical shell let q be the let q be the charge the total charge on the sphere charge on the shell now we can take a small area small area ds around the point p Let's call that as that area as ds. And you know the direction of ds will be perpendicular to the surface, like this. This is the ds. Also, you know that the electric field produced <coughs> electric field produced by this shell will be radially outward. So it will be something like this. This is the electric field. See, electric field produced by a sphere will be always radial. We, we know that fact that is perpendicular to the surface. So this let this green line represent the area vector ds and E represents the electric field. So the flux through this small area ds, we have the electric flux. Electric flux. Electric flux, the small electric flux d phi will be the dot product of the electric field and the small area vector okay so d phi is equal to but you know the angle between, since these two are in same direction the angle theta is equal to zero so you can write this as e d s cos zero degree so d phi is equal to e d s clear so in order to get the total flux let's say phi what you need to do is integrate this one integral eds that is equal to but you know the fact that electric field is spherically symmetrical that is at any point on this gaussian surface electric field remains the same because the this distance r is constant clear so you can take this e outside that is e integral ds implies flux phi is equal to e into integral of ds is equal to you can write that as s what what this what does this s represent s represents the surface area of this sphere if you integrate this small area you will get the total surface area of the sphere so phi will be e into 
4 pi r square. Let's call that as equation number 1. And if you apply, let me erase this. And if you apply Gauss's law in here, apply, apply Gauss's law, you have flux phi, electric flux through this Gaussian surface will be 1 by epsilon 0 times the charge enclosed by the surface. The Q is the charge enclosed by this Gaussian surface. That is the charge on the sphere. Let's call that as equation number 2. Equation 1 and 2 are equal since both of them represent the electric flux. You know 1 equal to 2 which implies E into 4 pi r square is equal to 1 by epsilon 0 times q or you will get E is equal to you can take this to the bottom 1 by 4 pi r square q by epsilon 0 or you can write this as E equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 q divided by r square. So this is the expression for electric field produced by a thin spherical shell outside it. Okay. But if you closely look at the equation, let me raise this. Suppose if you place a charge, suppose if in this, in this, in this figure, if you place a charge Q at the point O, and the distance r remains the same and if you take the point p then the equation of the electric field produced by this charge at the point p will be e equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 q divided by r square so that means this condition or the electric field produced by this sphere thin spherical shell at this point is same as that of the electric field produced by a point charge placed at the point O. Clear? So, these two conditions are similar. Now, we need to find the electric field produced by this thin spherical shell on its surface. That is, case 2, electric field, electric field on the surface of the sphere surface of the spherical shell spherical shell let's say again we have to take that positive charge let q be the positive charge total charge placed on the sphere and always it is distributed uniformly let r be the R be the radius of this thin spherical shell and let take a point on the sphere or at a point very close to the surface of the sphere. This point is almost on the surface of the sphere. So there is a, there we have to take a Gaussian surface, Gaussian surface through this point P that is very close to the surface. See there is no separation almost no separation between the Gaussian surface and surface of the sphere so let the distance let's mark that point with, the, with, with this green color let r be the r be the distance of the point p from the center of the sphere we can take this r approximately equal to the radius of the sphere so this is the case if you represent that mathematically. Again you take a Gaussian surface, not a Gaussian surface, a small surface ds at the point p. Its direction will be like this. Again if you take the electric field it will be radial and that is along the same direction as that of ds. Just mark that as a vector ds. Now we have the small flux d phi, d phi represents the small electric flux is equal to E dot ds. Okay. In order to get the total flux you have phi is equal to, uh, no, before
before that we have d5 is equal to since the angle between this e and ds is 0 you can write that as e ds cos 0 so d5 will this is equal to e ds now in order to get the total flux you must integrate this e ds again if you look at the electric field at every point on the Gaussian surface the electric field remains the same because the distance remains constant r that is it is spherically symmetrical so that you can take this e outside so e integral ds so phi will be e into integral of ds is s so phi is equal to e into 4 pi r square again if see this r is this r is almost equal to the radius of the sphere that is this Gaussian surface is very close close to the surface of the sphere so phi can be written as e into 4 pi r square clear let's call that as equation number one now applying Gauss's law again applying Gauss's law we have flux phi is equal to 1 by epsilon 0 times q. This is the Gauss's law. Gauss's law. Let's call that as equation number 2. So comparing 1 and 2, 1 is equal to 2 implies e into 4 pi r square is equal to 1 by epsilon 0 q. That gives the relation E is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 Q divided by R square. Clear. So, this is the electric field on the surface of the electric field for produced by this thin spherical shell on its surface. And this equation can also be written as E is equal to Q divided by, you can write this as 4 pi R square into 1 by epsilon 0. Clear. This can also be written like this. So what is this quantity Q by 4 pi r square? Charge divided by surface area. You know sigma is the value that is charge divided by surface area. Surface area which means the surface charge density. Sigma represents the surface charge density. So E can be written as sigma by epsilon 0. So on the surface we can we can write the electric field as sigma by epsilon 0. Well, sigma is the surface charge density of the thin spherical shape. Clear. Now we need to find the electric field at the point inside the thin spherical shape. Now let's find out the electric field inside the thin spherical shell case 3 electric electric field inside the spherical shell spherical shell again this shell is uniformly charged with the positive charge let's take a point p let's take a point p in the interior of the in the interior of the shell that o be its center so that its radius this is the distance r such that r is less than you know the radius of the sphere we still took that as capital r so our third case if you represent that as mathematically it will be r less than r now through this point draw a Gaussian surface like this and we, we don't know whether electric field is inside uh, electric field exists inside this spherical shell or not. For that let us assume there exists an electric field like this. Anyway that will be radial. Okay, but we don't know whether it exists or, or not. And let's also take a small area ds surrounding the point so that this is equal to ds. Again, 
you have the small flux t phi is equal to e dot ds and you know the angle between e and ds is zero so you can write this as e ds cos zero so that d phi equal to e ds again if you integrate you will get the total flux so that is equal to e integral ds again the electric field is spherical symmetrical you can take that outside as we discussed in the case before so e integral ds so phi will be e into 4 pi r square let's call that as equation number one we don't know whether electric field exists or not we just assume that its electric field is e and we know that it will be radial okay now if you apply Gauss's law apply Gauss's law phi is equal to 1 by epsilon 0 q but if you look at the value of q since inside this green gaussian surface there is no charge the charge is only outside this gaussian surface so q is equal to zero so that will give phi is equal to 1 by epsilon 0 times 0 that is equal to zero let's call that as equation number two now it is clear if you get the equate the equation one and two you will get one is equal to two represents equation 1 equal to equation 2 implies e times 4 pi r square is equal to 0 or e equal to 0 divided by 4 pi r square. So the electric field is 0. So electric field in the interior of a thin spherical shell or a charged thin spherical shell is 0. So these are the three cases. Clear.